Welcome to the virtual university transfer fair, everyone. This is presented by Wake Tech Academic Advising. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so happy to have you. We are going to have East Carolina University presenting next, but I did want to share a few announcements for this event. Um, there will be a Q&A portion toward the end of the event, so you can go ahead and put your questions in the question box throughout the presentation and um, those questions will be able to be addressed, if not during, then at the very end. And then also please make sure to stay for the entire event as there will be a survey posted in the chat box at the end of the event. And you can complete this survey for a chance to win a $50 Visa gift card. So without any further delay, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our presenter today with East East Carolina University ECU will be Holly Buck. Holly, you can take it away. Hi everyone, it's nice to be with you all virtually today. Um, I have a little presentation um, to share some highlights about ECU and then we'll tackle questions at the end. Um, so welcome to ECU. Um, we offer a hearty pirate welcome from Greenville. Um, if you were to come to our campus today, you would, you would um, visit our campus mall, which is pictured here. Um, this is an area where a lot of our students hang out. They do homework. Um, they play some little recreational sports um, and things like that. Now you now in the center of the screen, you'll see um, a little building that is our cupola. Um, that is a um, pride space on our campus. Um, you will see nobody walk underneath of it because it is rumored that if you walk underneath the cupola, you will not graduate in four years. I've never seen anyone walk underneath of it, so maybe that tradition is true. Who knows? All right. So um, as it was said, my name is Holly Buck. I'm one of the transfer admissions counselors here at ECU. Um, here is my email and phone number if you'd like that for contact information. Um, and the QR code is a link to schedule an appointment with me. So if you have some questions or you want to talk further, feel free to schedule an appointment. Um, but a little bit more about me. Um, I grew up in Chocolate, North Carolina, which is about 10 to 15 minutes outside of Little Washington, which is the first picture here. Um, it's always fun to take a walk down the waterfront um, and see all the boats and enjoy the nice weather. Um, the second picture here is my best little dude. His name is Bruce. Um, I spend a lot of my time with him on the weekends and at night, so um, couldn't be a presentation without him. And then lastly, um, here is a picture of our PD the Pirate statue. It's located um, towards the end of our campus mall out here, um, and it was really cool to be able to be on campus when he was returned after a little hiatus. Um, so he's definitely a source of ECU pride here on the campus. All right, so here at ECU, we have four campus locations. Our first location is our main campus, which is where my office and a lot of the academic buildings are located. Um, it is located close to downtown Greenville. We also have an Outer Banks campus, which is located near Manio, and it's home to our Coastal Studies Institute. Um, we have our Health Sciences campus, which is home to our College of Nursing, our Dental School and our Medical School, and a few other health, allied health science programs. And lastly, we have our West Research Campus, um, which is home to several restoration projects, but the one pictured here um, is restoration for artifacts recovered from Queen Anne's Revenge. So if you're a pirate fan or you're a Blackbeard fan, you can have the opportunity to explore some of the artifacts associated with his ship if you're interested. At ECU, we offer 87 different bachelor's degrees with one of the widest ranges of degree programs in North Carolina. Um, there are so many things offered at ECU and you will be able to see um, the opportunities here for you are endless. So if you're interested in something, odds are we have it here for you. Here at ECU, we'd like to brag that we're the only school in North Carolina with a dental school, medical school, School and a College of Engineering at the same institution. Um, so here in uh, ECU, we graduate um, more healthcare professionals than any university are in our state, and our engineering program is the highest ranked program of his kind in North Carolina. Just a few facts about ECU. So um, in fall of 2020, our 
total enrollment was about 29,000, give or take a couple hundred students, um, with 23,000 of that being undergraduate students. Um, and most of our students come from inside the state of North Carolina, as you can see at the top graphic here. Um, and we have students from every North Carolina county, 47 states, including DC and 99 countries. Um, so we have a diverse range of students and student experiences here at ECU that you will be able to learn from, meet and interact with. Um, and at the bottom of this screen here, there's a couple of accolades. Um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, um, we have a couple of accolades talking about our online school, um, our school for our ranking for veterans, um, and um, some Princeton Review and Forbes uh, ratings. A little bit more specific facts about transfer students. So we have, um, we accepted about 1700 transfer students in the fall of 2020. Um, we have about 2500 spots for freshmen, I mean transfer students. So there's a lot of opportunity to join Pirate Nation. Um, about 35% of our transfer students are online. So we have several degree programs that are 100% online designed for transfer students. Um, you can work full time and go to school online or if you just don't want to move to Greenville, you definitely can pursue your education online and continue living where you currently are. Um, most of our students come from the community college system and then we have a couple of outer state out of staters and a couple of students from the UNC system. But again, we have students from all 100 North Carolina counties, 47 states, including DC and 99 countries. Here's another slide with some more accolades. Um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, we just like to have some, we like to brag on ourselves a little bit here at ECU um, and share that with students. So some of our top transfer majors include nursing, management, industrial technology, elementary education and marketing. Um, and there's a few more listed here on the screen, but those are our, currently our top five. Um, we have a lot of students interested in our College of Business, which would house our management and marketing degrees. Um, and we have about a 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So while ECU is a large institution, there are opportunities for it to feel like a smaller institution so you can build those in crucial connections with your faculty and other students in your class. Here at ECU, we are we are one university, East Carolina University, but within the university there are eight colleges. And so as a student here at ECU, you would be a part of one of these colleges. So we have our College of Arts and Sciences, our College of Engineering and Technology, our College of Fine Arts and Communication, our College of Health and Human Performance, our College of Allied Health Sciences, College of Nursing, College of Business, and College of Education. So as a student, you would have more, you would have specific resources within those colleges to best support you here as along your journey at ECU. And if you're considering transferring to ECU, we have a nifty tool on our website called our Degree Explorer. Um, so you can check out all of these colleges and all of the majors we offer there to see if that might be what you're looking for or to look for something that you may be interested in if you're currently undecided. ECU is considered a premier research institution, so about 20% of our undergraduate students participate in some sort of extracurricular research with our faculty, whether it's an, an extension of their classroom experience or um, something they're interested in. Um, students have the opportunity to participate in um, current and up and coming research. Um, as undergraduate students, so you can work alongside faculty and graduate students and other professionals here at the university to explore a topic that may be of interest to you or may be of interest to you later in your professional career. Here at ECU, while we like our study, we also like to serve our community. Um, so our students um, love to give back to the Greenville area and the community around ECU. So here we have about 43 courses that have a service learning designation, which means that there are opportunities built into the classes for you to give back to your community. We also partner with about 160 other organizations in the community um, to give back and support um, individuals who live where we go to school. Um, here you can see students pictured pre-COVID um, working at the food bank, so um, it's not uncommon to see students there um, working to um, package food or distribute food. 
Um, and then we before COVID, we had about 28,000 student service hours per academic year. So we are we have a strong commitment to service and serving others here at ECU. Um, we, off, we do offer about 200 plus study abroad programs, including our ECU Tuscany campus, which is our permanent year round program based in the heart of Italy. So but you, if you look down towards the bottom of this page, you'll see some photos um, of students um, interacting in um, other countries. These programs are faculty led programs. You can go a summer abroad. You can go a full semester abroad, um, but you can take classes while abroad that will give you credit course credit for he, for ECU. You also can use financial aid and have support through scholarships to go abroad if that's something of interest to you. Here at ECU, we have over 500 plus student organizations, um, so more than likely if you're interested in something, we have it for you for things ranging from yoga to Pilates to flag football. Um, you can pretty much find something that you would like here. And if you don't find something you like or you have something um, that you would like to start, get a couple of your friends together and get a faculty advisor and you're more than welcome to start that on campus. Um, so we also have some uh, ways for you to be an athlete or engage in athletic activities without being on one of our um, form our formal university sports teams. So we have intramural sports and club sports as well. We are proud to represent North Carolina in the American Athletic Conference. So um, our men's football and all of our um, NCAA Division I teams um, participate in the American Athletic Conference. We have um, we have men's football, we have men's basketball, women's basketball, baseball, and a whole host of other athletic opportunities for you to cheer on the Pirates. Uh, here on campus, we have three campus neighborhoods that include 16 residents, residential facilities. Um, so as a transfer student, you would have the opportunity to stay on campus, but it is not required of you. Um, so you could live on campus in a hall style or a suite style residential facility. Um, we also have uh, living and learning communities within our um, residential facilities. Um, these are um, communities designed to support you and or your interest here at ECU. Uh, we, for, we have one for transfer students called Quest, so you would be able to be a part of a community with 30 of your peers who transferred from a university or community college and um, feel that community and get to learn more about ECU and grow and build connections that will last you a lifetime. Um, some of our, whoops, sorry about that. Some of our um, facilities within our residence halls include game rooms, study rooms, piano rooms, um, flexible meal plans, and outdoor meeting spaces. So you're not just going to sleep there. You can build a community and really dive deep into getting to know other people as well as enjoying your stay here at ECU. Now for dining, we have about 25 plus dining venues, including a Starbucks truck and a Chick-fil-A. We also have the only Braising Canes in North Carolina. So if you have tried that and you like it or you like to try it, that's a great opportunity for you to do so. In addition to those little eateries, we have um, two all you can eat dining halls. One is located on our main campus area, living area, and the other one is located on our College Hill living area. So if you're living on campus, you have plenty of food and a wide variety of things to snack on and eat during your time here. Here's a special opportunity for our transfer students. So our ECU has an honors college and this is the third, this would be upcoming the third um, application cycle for transfer students. So we are current, we will be preparing soon to um, share more information about this, but if you are currently in the community college system and you have a minimum of 24 credit hours with a 3.5 cumulative GPA, um, you may be eligible to apply to the Honors College. And as an Honors College student, you would have the opportunity to receive a $1,250 scholarship per semester, as well as the additional um, additional um, support of the Honors College through the mentoring program um, and, ex and other opportunities like that. 
Here at ECU, we love our traditions. Um, we have several that take place all throughout the year, uh, but my most favorite one is the one that happened a couple of weeks ago, which is our polar bear plunge. So students uh, got jumped in a pool um, in the middle of January for a t-shirt. Um, it was really cool to see the videos and, and the interactions. I believe the chancellor came out. Um, it was just a good time to build support um, just, just to come out and show your support for ECU and build community and also start the semester off right. We also have several other ones, including a ring ceremony, um, convocation, barefoot on the mall, homecoming and painted purple Friday. So here we take our purple seriously um, and we like to wear it on Friday. So faculty, staff and students um, celebrate our pirate pride and we wear purple on Friday. And then lastly, I would just like to mention our entrepreneurship challenge. So this is a is this is an opportunity through the College of Business for any entrepreneurs out there. If you have a product or a service or an invention, um, you can compete in this challenge to win funding for your product or your company um, as a student. So you get to pitch like Shark Tank if you've, anybody's ever seen that show um, and get to share your ideas and, and compete for funding um, and support with your project. So if that sounds of interest to you and you're coming to ECU, check that out because it's a great opportunity. Now we talked a little bit about the experience of here at ECU and I wanted to take a second to talk about affording an education here at ECU. Um, you know, uh, so on the screen here you'll see um, the tuition for both North Carolina residents and out of state students. Um, these numbers, if they change, they'll change on our website. So if you're ever curious about what is the most um, up to date tuition and fees and all that kind of stuff, feel free to check out our website because that will be where the most up to date information is. Um, but I did want to mention that 73% of our students here receive some sort of financial assistance. So through scholarships, grants, work study, other forms of financial aid. So it's really important if you're considering um, any kind of education or furthering your education to complete the FAFSA form, the free application for federal student aid. Just make sure if you're coming to ECU, you submit it by February 14th for priority review. So how to apply? We just ask that you submit a completed application, which can be found on our website at admissions.ecu.edu. A $75 non-refundable application fee and your official college transcript or transcripts from all the colleges you attended. Um, and so the most the most upcoming deadlines for applications would be the summer and, and that would be April 25th and then for the fall you need to apply by July 1st to be considered for admission. So we've talked a lot about the experience of ECU, but it's also a great opportunity for you to come visit us. Um, so we have campus tours every day where you would where you could walk around with a current ECU student hear about all the great things here at ECU and see the places on our campus. We also have virtual tours, so if you're not able to make it to campus, you can log on to our website um, and walk through the virtual tour. You'll see photos from around campus and also have a brief narration to help give you some more context to what you're looking at. We also have self guided tours, so if you come on a Saturday or a day that we're not operating campus tours, you can stop by our office and get a campus map and, and walk around campus on your own. We also have academic days and admitted student days. These are great ways for you to come and either dive deeper into your interest at ECU or get to see a little bit more about what ECU has to offer, what you'll be doing as a student and get to make connections on campus. If you're interested in signing up for a campus tour or any of the admitted student days or academic days, you can sign up with, through them, sign up for them on our website. Here at ECU, we are career focused. We want to we want to walk alongside you as you go along your career journey, and, and you can see that we really want you to be successful. Um, and, and some of that includes, you know, recognizing some of our graduates and where they're currently working. Um, so you can see up here we've got some um, alumni working like at Amazon and Duke and Facebook and Kellogg's and even UPS. Um, so we pride ourselves in being a tight knit, tight knit small school feeling, but we um, 
aim to help you be successful and find your place here in Pirate Nation. Whoops, sorry guys. All right, so um, we have a couple of resources on our website for transfer students. Um, so if you go to transfer.ecu.edu, we have several things like our estimated cost of attendance, our course of equivalency tool, which will allow you to take the courses that you've taken at the community college and see what their equivalent here at ECU is. Um, we have our transfer admission requirements, our university scholarship link, um, the degree explorer, which I mentioned earlier, information in the application for the Pirate Promise program, um, information for the Honors College, and information for the North Carolina Reverse Transfer Program. Um, and here's just a picture of our staff, and here's another set of contact information for you. Um, I did, was not a part of the team at the time this photo was taken, and so if you don't see me, that's why. Um, but our website, admissions.ecu.edu, is a great resource for you. Um, it will help, it can help you find most of your answers to your questions, but also get you connected with um, people in our office if you do have further questions that you cannot answer from the website. All right, is there any questions? Thank you so much, Holly. We are opening the floor for questions now, so students can go ahead and submit those in the Q&A box, and we'll have Mike read those off to you as they come in. While we're waiting for questions, though, Holly, can you tell us a little more about the Pirate Promise program for any students who might not be familiar with it? Sure. Um, so the Pirate Promise program is a partnership between the commu several community colleges, I believe it's about 40 now, um, and ECU to um, get students interested in ECU and to provide support for students as they may be transferring from a community college to ECU. Um, so it is, um, there is a separate application, however, there is not an application fee for the Pirate Promise program, but um, you have the opportunity to have additional mentoring and advising. Um, you will have a waived application fee to ECU, pending you meet the academic criteria at the time you're ready to apply. Um, you will also be, receive an ECU One card and have access to ECU services, like our libraries and some of our campus facilities. Um, so you're kind of like a student at ECU, but you're just not taking classes here quite yet. So it lets you dive in and take a look into what student life is for an ECU student before actually taking classes here. Um, so if you are interested in applying for the Pirate Promise program, students generally apply in their first semester or two of the community college. Um, and the application is actually live on our website for the next um, cycle. It will be open until March 7th, so you have about a month. Um, and if you have any additional questions about Pirate Promise, we definitely can chat about them as a group, or if you have a specific question that you want to be answered individually, we can definitely schedule a time to chat. Great, thank you. I'll have Mike take it away with the questions now. Okay. So starting with our first question, what is a competitive GPA for admissions um, or what is the minimum GPA requirement? Uh, the minimum GPA to apply as a transfer student is a 2.0. However, we do like to see students have uh, um, a little bit higher than that. That's not to say students <coughs> with 2.0 do not get accepted, um, but um, just we really like to say A's and B's or sometimes C's. C's are okay. Um, anything less than a C will not transfer to ECU. Um, so just keep that in mind um, when you're preparing to transfer. Okay, and when is the best time for applicants to apply? The sooner the better. So um, here at ECU, we have applications are accepted on a rolling basis, which means as soon as they come in and they're completed, they're sent to review um, and their decision. So if you're looking to get the most um, class selection or the widest variety of class selection, the earlier the better. That way, once registration opens up and you, you can do orientation and things like that, you can check off those boxes faster uh, so you can have the um, opportunity to select the best classes out of the pool. Okay, and a student is asking if they transfer from Wake Tech with less than 20 credits, uh, will they still be considered an incoming freshman? 
No, so if you have taken any credits in a college or university post high school, you are considered a transfer student. So if you have less than the 24 credit hours, we will need you to send your high school transcript in addition to your college transcript to complete your application. Uh, and then the follow up question is, do you recommend that students complete the associate degree or um, are they fine with just the 24 to 30 uh, minimum uh, transferable credits? I think it's all about what works best for you. So I mean, we would love in the community college system would love for you to complete your degree. Um, however, you are eligible to transfer um, at, at 24 credit hours or sometimes even a little less. Um, so I would say think about your overall goals and how that fits into your plan. Um, but if you do transfer before you have that associate's degree, we do have a program called the reverse transfer program. Um, so you can transfer to ECU and then um, opt in to join the program and what that means is once you complete the courses needed for your associate's degree, um, ECU can send those courses back to your community college um, and you can earn your associate's degree while working towards your bachelor's degree, even though you didn't earn it at the um, community college. Um, so that is an opportunity for you to think about, but I would say just take some time and think about what your overall goals were. Maybe work out the costs. Um, and expenses and that sort of thing, um, but you definitely can transfer with less than the associate's degree. And if that's something you would like to talk about further, we could definitely talk more about that individually. OK, and I have another student uh, asking, do they need to submit transcripts the same time that they submit the application? If you can, it's better that way because um, the transcripts will match with your application faster and give you a faster time to get your application decision. Sometimes when we wait, um, your application will not be complete, so you will not get a decision. Um, so if you, the sooner the better. Um, it's easier sometimes to submit your application and to hop on over and submit your transcripts, and that way you've got all the boxes checked, and then you're just waiting on us. But um, you don't have to submit it by any particular time. Just note that your application is not complete without those official transcripts. OK, and if a student has uh, multiple transcripts um, from different schools, do you guys just take the most recent GPA? Do you average them together? How is that kind of? So we average them together. Um, so you would just send us all those transcripts and then we'd cal do some calculating in math on the back end to give you one GPA for like, kind of like your transfer GPA. So we take all the courses and average them together from all of the institutions. Uh, is the best way to apply to ECU through ECU's website or can students use the Common App? For transfer students, you can only use the application on our website. If you're a first year student or a freshman student, you can use the Common App, but we only have one application method for transfers. Uh, do you have any advice uh, for applicants to help them stand out? And what are the most important things that they should highlight on their applications? So on our application, we do have an optional essay, but it's not required. Um, but if you feel compelled to write um, some some sort of narrative or story, just be authentic and write what's important to you um, and just stay in contact with us. That way we can keep in track, keep track of your application, you know, make sure there's nothing missing and kind of um, work together to make your transition to ECU smoother. Um, as, but as far as the application itself, it's pretty straightforward. You just answer boxes like your name or you've attended your address, that sort of thing. Um, but there is that optional essay. So if you want to include a little bit more about you and um, outside of your basic demographic information and you want us to get to learn a little bit more about you, that can be a great place to do that. There is no official prompt, but I always just tell students to write about something that's meaningful to you. Uh, could you describe student activities or, or student life uh, for transfer students? And then are there any uh, specific clubs and organizations for transfer students? Uh, OK, so I'll answer the, 
the second half of that question first. Um, so to my current knowledge, there's other than the living and learning community, there's not any specific official organizations for transfer students. Transfer students have the opportunity to be a part of all of the clubs and organizations on our campus. Um, but we do, you know, within our overall total of organizations and clubs, transfer students may choose to be a part of the academic organizations like the nursing club or uh, something specific to their major. That way they can kind of build that community a little bit more. Um, now student activities, transfer students do have the opportunity to do all the student activities available to students. Um, we do offer I believe once a semester there's a transfer meet and greet where you can come um, to our old student center and meet other transfer students and just kind of have a time to get connected to people you may not have met before um, to kind of build a little bit more community. So I know that that is specifically for transfer students as well. And our orientations for transfer students are only for transfer students. So you'll meet peers just like yourself who are transferring and maybe get to make a new friend or build a connection, that sort of thing. Um, but transfer students have the opportunity to participate in everything a regular student would. Great, thank you so much, Holly. That was all great information. I'm going to leave the question and answer box open for a little longer. Let's see if any students have some last minute questions that roll in. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put the survey link for the chance to win a $50 gift card in the um, question answer box and if holly if you are able to can you add your contact information as an announcement in that same area and if not i can add it i'm not sure how to add it um okay gonna, i can do it do you mind adding it for me yeah no problem and while she does that we actually had another question come in um are teacher recommendations required for the transfer application at ecu Nope, no recommendations are required. Um, you can send them in, but they are not a requirement for application. So typically they're not included in our um, application review. But if there's something that you want to add to your application, there again, you might want to um, type it in the little essay box or the personal statement. I'm not quite sure what it's called on the application, but it's either an essay or a personal statement. Great, thank you. I just added your contact in. So they'll be able to reach out if they think, if any students think of additional questions later or if they didn't want to post those in the chat today. We'll go ahead and leave it open for a couple more minutes. Um, we'll do one or two more minutes just to see if any new questions come through. And then if not, I'll go ahead and close out the live event. Looks like we did get one more question. A student has asked, should they submit their military transcripts too? Yes, if you have military transcripts, go ahead and send them our way. Um, and we'll definitely include that in your evaluation. Great. Give everyone about one more minute and then we will close out if no more questions come through. Uh, the next question is, do online students have the same access to the campus resources? Yeah, yeah they sure do. Um, some, I believe most, if not all of our um, online 
um, our campus resources like the career center and things like that have options for phone meetings or virtual meetings. Um, so if you would like to use any of those services, um, definitely it should be available to you. You just wouldn't necessarily have to come to campus if you wanted to, if you didn't want to. Um, and if a, if a facility didn't offer virtual, you can always ask um, and they should be able to accommodate you. Great, that's good information to know. All right, I'll give it one more minute because we had some last minute questions come through, so we'll allow one more minute. In that, in the meantime, students don't hesitate to go ahead and fill out that survey link. It's in the question and answer box under announcements for a chance to win that $50 gift card for attending today. And I did want to say thank you so much to Holly for joining us and for all the students who were able to join today. We're really appreciative of your time. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in. So I'll go ahead and end the live right now. Thank you all for joining today.